Ramban. We are continuing our limud of Sefer Yirmiyahu, and we are up to Perek Lamet Ches. And if you remember, Yirmiyahu is telling Sitkiyo that they cannot fight the Babylonians, and they will fail, and there will be Chorban unless there's Shuvah. And as a result, Sitkiyo, who wants to hear what the Prophet says, but at the same time is under pressure by everybody else to aggressively fight the Babylonians, including the false prophets that are giving him that message. So he puts Yermio in prison, although he tries to make it as humane as possible, giving him a good food and the like. <clears throat> so Perek Lamet Ches just continues that story, and as is often the case, the uh, chapter division does not reflect the fact that this is a continuous narrative. So the story continues. Vayishma Shafatya ben Matan, Ugedal Yahu ben Pashkor, this is not the famous Gedal Yahu, Vayuchal ben Shalem Yahu, Upashkor ben Milkiah. Okay, these are four officials of the kings. Esad Varim, Asher Yirmiyo Medaber, El Kolam Lemur. Apparently, and we see this from before as well, that even though Yermio is in the Chatzera Matara, people are able to visit him, and he is able to continue to give Nevoas. So yeah, he's in prison, but he's able to get Nevoa, and he's able to communicate Nevoa. And this is what Yermio is speaking to the Am in the Chatzera Matara. Kai Amar Hashem, Unless you do tshuva, all who are living in this city of Yerushalayim, Yomos Bacherev Beraov Uvadever, will die by either the sword, or by famine, or by plague, by sickness. Meaning, if you try to fight the Babylonians, you're going to be destroyed. Vahayit say elakastim, but those who surrender to the Babylonians, vachoya, you'll go into Golas, but you will live. nafshay your, your own life will be your spoils. Vachay, and you will live. And the city will be delivered into the hands of the armies of the Babylonian king and he will conquer it. So the Sarei HaMelech are hearing this and they go to Sidkiyo and say, no, Sidkiyo knew this already. Sidkiyo knows this is Yermio's message. But remember, externally he has to make believe that he's in support of an aggressive war against Babylonia. So the Sarim say to the Melech, You must know This man must be killed. We have soldiers who are fighting. And here we have a man who claims to be a prophet who is saying that our soldiers will be killed and be defeated. That's going to take away their courage. That's going to take away their willingness to fight. He is a traitor who is undermining our military effort. He must be killed like a deserter. He is not seeking the welfare of this nation. He is seeking what is bad for this nation. Now again, Sidkiyo knows the truth. But he doesn't have the courage to fight them because he's afraid of what they're going to do to him. So what he says is, this is a very weak response, do what you want, I'm not getting involved. The king cannot argue with you. So Tzidkiyo is not going to kill him, but he says, do what you want. So what happens is, Pasuk Vav, Vayikhu es Yirmiyo v'yashlichu oso alabor, they take your Mio and they throw him into a pit. Basically, to die of starvation 
or even quicksand, we'll see. Milkiyo ben Amelech, Jebuchatzer Matara. There was a boar, and Milkiyo, the son of Sitkiyo, actually threw him into the pit. Vayishalchu es Yirmiyo b'chavolim, they lowered him by ropes. Ubabor ein mayim, just like by Yosef, although it doesn't say there were snakes. The boar had no water. Kiim tit, but there was mud. Vayitba Yirmiyo batit, and Yirmiyo was sinking in the tit. This might actually be quicksand. Basically, he's sinking. He doesn't even have a footing. So he'll either die of starvation or die of suffocation much faster. And this is a real avla that Sidkiyo, who knew that Yermio was a navi of Hashem, does not have the courage to stand up for him. But one of the king's servants did. Vayishma Eved Melech Hakushi. So it's an interesting name that Eved Melech, called Eved Melech Hakushi. So literally that would mean the African. There was a black servant whose name was Eved Melech Hakushi. Ish Saris, who was an officer, who Bebesa Melech. Kinosnu as Yermio Labor. When Eved Melech heard that Yermio was thrown into the pit, and the Melech is Yeshe Bishar Binyamin, and the, the king is sitting in the tribal gate by which Binyamin entered Yerushalayim. Now, I just want to point out that Rashi brings a medrash that Eved Melech is another name for Yermio's faithful servant, Boruch ben Neriah, and he's called an Eved Melech, not because he was an Eved to Tzidkiyo, but he was an Eved of Hashem. And Kushi means that just as a Kushi is Meshuna, is so noticeable, at least in Eretz Yisrael, because it was rare, Meshuna bebasar, Baruch was Meshuna in his righteousness from everybody else. So we have two Pshatim. Some say Eved Melech was a black slave. Could even be non-Jewish, an Eved Kenaini. And some say it's Baruch ben Neria. But be it as it may, he hears that Yermio is thrown into a pit and he's going to die. Vayet say Eved Melech mi Beis HaMelech. Eved Melech immediately leaves the king's uh, palace. And he goes directly to the king, who is not sitting in the palace right now. And he says, Look at the riches of what people are doing to this Novi of Hashem. And they've thrown him into a pit by Yomas Tachle the Arav. And he will die from starvation if he doesn't die from quicksand. Ki ain't a lechem od beir. There is no bread in the city. So no one's going to think of him. And he can't go around and beg. Right? If, if he wouldn't be in the boar, he could beg for bread or look around. But he's in a boar. There's no bread there. And if people don't have bread on their own, they're not going to bring it to him. So basically... Again, Sidkiyo is a complicated character. He knows this is wrong. He's afraid. But interestingly enough, Eved Melech seems to have given him courage. The Melech commands Eved Melech, the Kushi, the African saying, Kach biyotcha mizeh shaloshim anashim. Gather 30 people. Vahalisa es Yermio Anavi Minabor to lift him out of the boar. Biterem Yomos before he dies. Now, 
why would you need 30 people? 30 people to take your meal out of the bar? Rashi says, by this time, the famine through the siege of Yerushalayim was so great that people were weak and they didn't have the strength. You needed 30 people to lift one man. And I would also add, particularly if there's quicksand, you know, the quicksand, you have to pull them out of the quicksand. That takes extra strength. Vayikach Eved Melech Eshanashim Biyaday. Eved Melech took the 30 people. Vayavay Beis HaMelech El Tachas HaHitzar. And then he went into the storehouses. You'll see what this is in a moment. Vayikach Misham Boluye Sechavot Ubluye Mulachim. They took old clothing. They took used clothing like rags. Apparently, I'm not sure why the king was holding on to this, but for whatever it would be, they took clothing and they took rags. And what was the purpose? Vayishalchem el yirmiyo el bor b'chavolim. They lowered it by ropes. They lowered all of these rags or clothes. Vayoymer eved melech hakushi el yirmiyo. And eved melech hakushi said to yirmiyo, Simna buluye haschavot v'amolochim Take these rags, tachas atzilut yodecha, put them under your armpits. Again, let me explain the issue. The issue here is that the way I picture it, I'm not sure if my picture is correct, your mio is kind of sinking in quicksand. And it's going to take a great deal of strength to pull him out. And the way he's going to be pulled out is they put ropes under his arms and they pull. But the ropes themselves, you pull, put, ar- put ropes under a person's arms, the ropes are going to irritate his arms, hurt his arms, maybe even break his arms. So they want him to be cushioned. Put all of these rags under your arms so when we pull on the ropes it will not be chafing against your armpits. It will be going against the rags and that will soften uh, the effect on you when we pull you out. So that's what it was. My only question is, and I, I, I don't understand a, a, a phrase here, because it says, put the rags under your armpits. That makes sense. Mitachas under the ropes. Now, under the ropes is not the picture I have. Under the ropes would mean that you first put the ropes, and then under the ropes, put the rags. Putting the rags under the ropes is not going to help you. What you really want to do is you want to put the rags over the ropes so they are between your armpit and the ropes. So I, I don't understand exactly the Lashain of why the rags would be placed under the ropes. Now it could be, perhaps, that we could teach mitachas not to mean under the ropes, but in place of the ropes, meaning where the ropes would have been, we'll put the rags, and mimela, that's going to cushion you. But that's the basic idea. And Pasuk Yudimel says, Vayimshechu es Yermiyo b'chavalim. They pulled him up with the ropes. Thirty people took. V'yalu oso min abor. They brought him up from the pit. But he's still in prison. He did not leave the prison. Vayeshev Yermiyo b'chatzar matara. Vayishlach ha-melech tzitkiyo v'yikachas Yermiyo navi elav el-mavo ashlishi yishu b'veis Hashem. And once again, Sidkio wants to have a rendezvous, a secret meeting with Yermio, and he brings Yermio to the Mavo Hashlishi, that is like a 
well, we don't know exactly what this is. Rashi says, Lo Yadati Mekaimai, but this is a third hallway. There were different hallways in the Beis HaMikdash. This is a hallway in the Beis HaShem. Vayemer HaMelech El Yirmiyo Shayel Ani Aischadavar I need to ask you something again. Al techached me many davar. Do not hold back anything. I want the whole story. Vayimer Yirmiyot said, "Kyo, huh? Ki agid lecha. When I tell you the truth, hello, hamais to me, you want to kill me? I'm going to give you my standard message. You're going to kill me. V'chi yatzchan. Any advice I give you, lo sishmala. You don't lo sishmala. You don't listen to me. Vayishava." Hamelech Tzidkiyo El Yirmiyo Baseser Lamar, and the king swore privately, secretly, to Yirmiyo Chay Hashem by the life of God, Asherus Alano Asan Nefesh Azayis who created my neshama, Im Amisacha I will not kill you Vim and Tancha Biad and Hashem Ma'ela Hashem Avachim and I will not even deliver. Unlike last time, where I kind of said. To the those people, do what you want. I will not do that. I will not give you over to them. So now Yirmiyo will give them, give Sidkiyo the bottom line once again. Vayomer Yirmiyo el Sidkiyo kai amar Hashem elokets of Akos eloke Yisrael im yatso teitze el sarei melech baga. If you surrender yourself. To the officers of the king of Babel, for Chaysa Nafshecha, number one, you will live, and number two, Hayir Hazais Lo Tisaref Beesh, meaning to say, you'll be conquered, you'll be slaves, but the city won't be burnt, and the Beis Hamikdash won't be burnt. For Chaysa Atav Veisecha, you and your family will live, but Vim Lo Seitzei El Sarei Melech Babel, but if you do not surrender. They're going to take it anyway. And they will burn it. You will not escape. Now, again, it doesn't say he'll die because Lamai said Sidkiyo was not killed by Nebuchadnezzar. He was blinded, but he died naturally. So that's why the Lushan here is if you surrender, you'll be able to live here. If you don't surrender, you will not escape, you will be taken prisoner, but it doesn't say you will die because Taki didn't die. So, surrender! And you'll have a Beis HaMikdash. Again, I, I raised this as a question earlier, I'll just throw it out as something to think about. The implication of the Psukim is that if you make Shalom with Babel, there won't be a Chorban. But what about the fact that the Chorban came because of the Averis? Of Avaydazara Gilerai Shavichus Tamim, that didn't go away. And making peace with the Babylonians is not the same as a Tshuva Gemura. So why would there be such a significance that if you make Shalom with the Melech Bavel, there will not be a Chorban? Why should that be exactly? Why is that so important? I understand the concept that you don't have the Zechus to be Menatzeich B'Melchama. Okay, you're not going to win. But surrender? So, I don't know. If you read the Pasuk literally, surrender will mean the city won't be burnt. I'm assuming that also means the Mikdash, but maybe not. Maybe the Mikdash will have to be Necharav. Benkach u Benkach. But the city would be spared. So, Yermio's message is surrender, and it will be better for you. And it will be better for the Jewish people. But once again, Sidkiyo is trying to play both sides of this. Vayomer Hamelech Sidkiyo El Yirmiyo, Ani Dayeg Es Yehudim Asher Noflu El Akastim. Who I am really afraid of is the other way. Apparently, there were some pacifists who already went over to the Babylonian side. If I surrender myself then those people are going to get me in trouble by basically saying I ought to be killed because I was fighting Babel for all of those years. They will abuse me. 
you will not be delivered into their hands. Shema no b'kayel Hashem l'asher nidover elecha. Listen to the voice of God that I'm speaking to you. V'yitav lecha, and things will be good for you. Sechi nafshecha, and your life will live. V'yim ma'ein atal atzes. But if you don't surrender, zadav sherani Hashem. This is what Hashem showed me. In other words, it's not going to be a good end for you or for Yerushalayim or for the Beis Hamikdash. V'hine kol anoshem v'shen yeshav v'beis hamelech Yehuda. The women who lost their husbands, but they're remaining in Yehuda, Mutsao, Tel Sari, Melech Babel, they will be taken and abused by the officers of the kings of Babel. Vihine Aimreis, and this is what they will say about you, meaning if you don't surrender, you're in a lot more trouble. Even the women will gossip and say, Hesi Sucha Vyechlulacha and Shleshlaimecha. The so-called men who say peace, meaning they say, you'll win, you'll be victorious. They enticed you to engage in a war that you cannot possibly win. Your legs are sinking in the mud. Like Yermio just came out of the pit, but he's telling Sitkio, it's you that are sinking in the mud. Nasaygu achar. You think you're moving forward, you're really moving backwards. You're going to lose everything by fighting. V'yaskol nashecha, your miyo continues. V'yaskol nashecha, v'yaspanecha, maitziyin el akastim. And all of your wives and your children will be taken prisoner by the custom and you will not escape either. Again, he wasn't killed by them, but he was taken prisoner and blinded. You will be grabbed, seized into the hands of the Melech Bavel and and the city shall be burnt with fire, including the Mikdash. Again, Sidkio is quite literally a tortured person. Nobody should know that we had this conversation. And then you will not be killed. Why? If the officers here that I spoke to you. Ubo Elacha and they come to you. Viomru Elacha Hagidan Alanu Madi Bartala Melech. What did you say to the king? Al Tehachimena, do not hold it back. Fulonimisaka, and then we won't kill you. Meaning they'll say, Tell us and we won't kill you. Sitkyo is telling him the other way around. If you tell them, they will kill you. Right? So Sidkiyo is giving Yermio some practical advice, although I'm not sure the Navi needs this advice. And that is, when my officers say to you, tell us what you told the king so we will not kill you, and what did the king say? Sidkiyo says, don't tell them the truth. Make up a story. Tell them the following. Mapil ani tchinosi lefnei amelech levilti hashiveni beis yahena san lamosham. Just say that you begged that I not return you to the original pit in Eretz Binyamin, that was apparently even worse than the quicksand pit in the house of Yahena In other words, do not say that you gave me a message, just say that you begged for an alleviation of the conditions of your imprisonment. This was simply a compassionate visit. And the Pasuk says, Kachave, Pasuk Chafzayin, Vayavayu kalasarim al yirmiyo v'yishalu oso v'yagid lem kechol adwar me'el asher tziva melech Yermio told them exactly what the king told him to say, so they left him alone because they didn't think he was undermining their agenda. And they left him alone, that no one knew what he had told the king. Yermio remained in the prison in the king's courtyard 
until the day that Yerushalayim was captured. And then, it's very strange, the Pasuk continues, and it was when Yerushalayim was captured, and then new Perak, new Pasuk, when in fact it is a Hemshech, it's the beginning of the next Pasuk. So why it is part of the old Pasuk, uh, which it is, uh, is a bit of a Sorach Ian.